My parents tried to steal my inheritance from my spoiled sister, but when grandma found out, everything changed and now the family is falling apart. Male 28-year-old comes from a family with a convoluted and long history of favoritism. My younger sister Amy, 25, has always been preferred by my parents, especially dad over me. Starting in our childhood, this partiality only got worse as we grew up. Amy was the golden child from my earliest memories. Our parents threw her an elaborate birthday party including professional face painters, a bouncy castle, and a petting zoo when I was five and she was two. I had a store-bought cake and a little family supper for my birthday that same year. This helped to define the tone for years to come. The differences became clearer as we aged. Amy always received the newest toys, the greatest clothes, and most attention. I recall saving months of allowance for a new bike when I was 10 years old. Amy wanted one too, hence she had a fit when she saw it. Rather of educating her about waiting or saving, my parents went right out and got her an even nicer bike than mine. Another arena where the bias was evident was school. Amy's parents attended all of her school functions, while they usually missed mine. I took front stage in the school play in fourth grade. I practiced for weeks, driven by great enthusiasm. My parents arrived an hour late on the night of the play, therefore missing my major scene. They were consoling Amy after she complained of stomach aches. She was good later on, they had simply lost count of time playing with her. Regarding academics, nothing I ever appeared to do seemed sufficient. I joined the math club, often received straight A's in middle school, and even took first place in a regional science fair. Though my parents hardly noticed these successes, they gave Amy a celebratory dinner and purchased her a new phone as encouragement to keep getting better when she scored a B plus on one test in her weakest subject. In particular, high school was difficult. With an eye toward their approval, I put myself into whatever activity I could. Along with keeping a 4.0 GP, AI was editor of the school newspaper, debate team captain, Amy coasted through school, hardly keeping a C average, and spent much of her time hanging out with friends. I was chosen from our university as one of two junior year applicants to participate in a famous summer program at Harvard. It was such an honor and I felt great. My dad grumbled and moved the topic to Amy's forthcoming dancing performance when I told the news over supper. At least my mother remarked, that's nice, but she moved on fast. My parents couldn't bring me to the airport on the night Amy's concert fell on the same day I was leaving Harvard as they wanted to see Amy perform. I asked the parents of a friend for a ride. Another agonizing experience was the college application process. I worked months on improving my essays, engaged in extracurricular activities and ZAT preparation. Several elite colleges accepted me and I was given a sizable scholarship to my ideal college. When I told my parents about this at supper, their reaction was barely passable. That's good, but don't let it run to your head. College isn't everything, my dad advised. Just remember about us when you're off becoming a big shot, my mother said. On the other hand, my parents were quite understanding when Amy barely passed high school and chose not to attend college. They admired her for knowing herself and for defying social expectations. Something they never done for me, they even paid for her a car as a graduation gift. Emotionally, this persistent favoritism suffered me greatly. Over my teens and early 20s, I battled anxiety and despair. Beginning therapy in college, I came to realize that my parents' actions were not my fault. Years of effort were needed to develop my self-esteem and learn to validate myself rather than depending on my parents' approval. My immediate family did not help me, yet I still managed to lead a decent life. By the time I finished from college with honors, I had a decent job in finance and even purchased my own house by 27 years old. Though my parents aren't, I'm glad of what I've accomplished. Here, then, is where the current drama begins. On Dad's side, my grandfather died not too long ago. He left a sizable estate and was a successful businessman who started from nothing. In his will, he split his possessions equally among his grandchildren, including me, Amy, and our cousins, as well as his children, Dad and his siblings. My portion of the bequest was significant, roughly $500,000. It would have let me invest in my future, pay off my education loans, and perhaps even launch my own company someday. This unanticipated windfall and the chances it could present made me happy. When the will was read though, my parents clearly became agitated. Later they drew me aside and said me they felt it was unjust I received an equal portion. Amy, who lives in our parents' basement and works part-time at a coffee shop, said she needed the money more since she was suffering. Though stunned, I attempted to keep cool. I clarified that Grandpa made this decision. They had no say on how he decided. They insisted I should act morally and give Amy my fair part. They became enraged when I turned down and began guilt-tripping me, calling me unappreciative and selfish. Every incident my dad could recall where they had helped me came under discussion. Though I worked part-time to help with finances, he emphasized paying for my medically necessary braces, buying me school supplies, the bare minimum, and allowing me reside at home during college. He conveniently forgot about the car they bought Amy, the many shopping sprees, and the fact they still support her at 20 to 25. The matter got rapidly more serious. Acting as the will's executor, my dad chose to handle things himself. Along with her own inheritance, he declared he would be interpretation grandpa's intentions and give Amy my whole part. He said grandpa would have wished if he had known our unique situation. 
I was broken. This was not only obviously illegal, but also a terrible reminder of how little my parents thought of me, pointing that grandpa had always treated all his grandchildren equally and that he was aware of our circumstances I tried to reason with them. Then my mother accused me of speaking ill of the deceased by implying grandpa would have preferred anything else than what my dad was advocating. I mentioned certain memories of grandpa pushing my academic and career goals, but my parents brushed off these as misinterpretation. They said grandpa wanted to make sure Amy was taken care of and had privately voiced worry about her future. They had no response when I asked why he hadn't simply penned the will that way then. Amy, for her part, was awkward about the circumstances but did not voice criticism of our parents. She merely shrugged and said, Mom and Dad know best. When I tried to chat to her alone, she obviously wasn't going to be much help. Feeling misled and wounded, I asked grandpa's widow, my paternal grandma, for guidance. Hearing what was happening, she became enraged. She informed me that my parents had no authority to alter the will, and that this was exactly not what Grandpa had planned. Grandma sent some material that clarifies the matter. Several years ago, apparently my parents asked Grandpa to give everything to Amy in his will. Grandpa had steadfastly objected, saying he thought all of his grandchildren should be treated equally. He had even included a stipulation in his will declaring that anyone challenging the equitable distribution would lose their portion. Equipped with this knowledge, I challenged my parents. Grandma's disclosure of their earlier attempt to affect the will startled them, saying they were only looking out Amy's future helped my dad try to defend it, but I could see the guilt on their faces. Grandmother acted right away. She got in touch with her will's other executors and attorney. She also got in touch with my dad's siblings, who shared her equally strong indignation at what he was attempting. Taken together, they stopped my dad's scheme and guaranteed that the will would be carried out as stated. Though they are unhappy with me, my parents were obliged to back off. They argued I should have handled this in-house instead of involving others and accused me of turning the family against me. My mother sobbed over how I had split the family and deceived them. I said I never expected anything from them anyway, when my dad threatened to cut me out of their will totally. Now should I accept the inheritance they are threatening to break off all communication? How my dad even went so far as to suggest that I would not be welcome in their house should I inherit it. In a particularly low blow, my mother remarked that my acceptance of the money reveals that I never truly loved them and was merely ready to profit from their passing. The matter splits the extended family. A few of my cousins are encouraging since they understand the long-standing favoritism and value me for advocating myself. Others believe I should have yielded in order to preserve peace since family harmony comes first over financial consideration. Although my dad's siblings are definitely on my side, this has strained their relationship as well as my parents. Amy finds herself enmeshed in all this. She confided in me privately that although she feels bad and didn't ask for this, she is not ready to challenge our parents. She has been trained her whole life to depend on them and seek their praise, hence I don't blame her totally. But still, a part of me long she would help me just once. This circumstance has brought out a lot of past suffering and bitterness. I find myself remembering all the times I was passed over or discounted in favor of Amy, the birthday celebrations I missed, the school functions my parents missed, the successes that went unreported. This one occurrence seems to be bringing to a head a lifetime of unfairness. Though the whole affair has caused a great divide in the family, I am keeping my ground and want to take my inheritance as grandpa meant. My parents hardly talk to me, family get-togethers have grown awkward. I missed our monthly family meal last week for the first time ever since I could stand the cold shoulders and accusing glares. Though there is turmoil, a tiny bit of me feels empowered. I'm confronting the unfair treatment by my parents for the first time in my life. I'm declaring my value and refuse to be written off. It's both terrible and freeing at once. Though I think I'm in the right here, the family drama is draining me. Something I hadn't experienced since college, I have started having anxiety attacks once more. To assist handle all this stress, I'm thinking about returning to therapy. Am I the one who should have refused to comply with my parents' expectations and accepted my inheritance? Should I have simply handed Amy the money to maintain peace? Although I'm bored of being the family scapegoat, I also fear losing my family totally. Any guidance or viewpoint would be much valued. Update, since my first post six months ago, a lot has happened. I want to thank everyone for their support and guidance. It truly kept me strong during trying circumstances. Let me start with the legal aspect of things. Many of you advised, and I did see my own attorney. He verified that I had every right to inherit and that what my dad attempted was in fact illegal. He helped me record everything and ready to act legally should needed. Fortunately, things did not transpire as such. Along with my dad's siblings, my grandma and her attorney worked out matters without involving court. I got my whole fortune and the will was carried out exactly as intended. Because of his will manipulation attempts, my dad was removed as an executor. This was a somewhat demanding process spanning several weeks. My parents threatened litigation, there were tense meetings and furious phone calls, but ultimately the law was unambiguous and they had to back off. Still ongoing though, the family fallout has been noteworthy. At first, my parents doubled down on their viewpoint. They charged me with being avaricious and neglectful of my sister. They also sought to mobilize other family members against me, disseminating allegations that I had somehow coerced grandpa into giving me money. Luckily, most of the family saw through their trickery. About one month following the will's acceptance, 
There was one really unpleasant occurrence at a family gathering. When my parents showed there unannounced, my aunt was hosting and hadn't asked them to come, they started a scene. Starting to shout about how I had taken from Amy and corrupted grandma against her, my dad became saying I had ruined all these wonderful memories my mother flung an old photo album squarely at my feet. It was awkward and terrible. It took several relatives to cool things down and persuade my parents to leave. Bless her heart, my grandmother turned out to be my most powerful supporter over all of this. She related tales of how my grandfather had always been pleased of my achievements and how he especially wanted to make sure all his grandchildren had equal chances. She even said grandpa had maintained a scrapbook of my accomplishments, newspaper clippings of academic honors, copies of my college acceptance letters, and even the program from that university play my parents had been late for. This insight was sad as well as wonderful. Grandma also volunteered to straighten the records with the wider family. She organized a family gathering excluding my parents, laying out the entire history of my parents' partiality including events I had long forgotten or never ever heard about. Having someone at last recognize the unfairness I had gone through for years was vindicating, but it also reopened old scars. About my sister Amy, she at last found her voice in all this. She came to me personally and apologized for not sticking up for me earlier after some soul-searching and several long talks with our grandmother. She said she thought our parents' preference was improper but she had been too terrified to confront it. We discussed our childhood and how it influenced both of us in great length and emotional intensity. Amy admitted that being the favorite child wasn't as wonderful as it seemed. She never learned how to stand on her two feet and felt great pressure to live up to our parents' expectations. She told tales of times she yearned to accomplish things on her own, but our parents would swoop in and handle everything for her therefore depriving her of the opportunity to develop and learn from her mistakes. For our relationship, this talk marked a sea change. We began to mend the sibling link our parents' partiality had broken. Just the two of us have been routinely meeting for coffee to discuss and encourage one another through this family crisis. Declaring that she was going to pay for college with her inheritance astonished everyone. She claimed seeing me stand up for myself motivated her to start managing her own life. Once she decided what she wanted to study, she registered in a nearby community college first intending to transfer to a four-year university. Our parents let out startled gas. They knew, I believe, that their babying had not done Amy any favors. The response of my parents to all this has been diverse and changing. They first attacked both of us angrily. They tried to guilt Amy into quitting college to help the family since they said I turned her against them. They changed strategy when that proved ineffective. After several protracted talks with my grandmother and seeing Amy's great transformation, my mother began to recognize how damaging their actions had been. She has made some hesitant moves toward reconciliation, even beginning therapy to address her problems. She got in touch to apologies, owning that she had been unfair and requesting a chance to write things. It's a slow process and while I'm gently hopeful, I'm also keeping strong limits. Sadly, my dad has been less likely to own any mistakes. Still furious, he feels as though he is the victim in all this. He has been chilly toward Amy since she chose to go college and hardly speaks to me. He has tried a few times to control us, threatening to sell our childhood house should we fail to come to our senses or forgiving us should we realize we were wrong. Although we are both standing strong, it hurts to see him distance both of his children like this. The dynamics among the extended family have changed dramatically. I now live closer to my dad's siblings, who have been quite helpful, and my grandmother. Having heard from my aunts and uncles about handling my dad's challenging conduct over the years, it has lessened my loneliness in this fight. Deeper bonds with some of my cousins who stood by me have also developed. Starting a monthly cousin meal allows us to all catch up free from the drama of the older generations. For myself, I have been making sensible use of my inheritance. Having paid off my college loans, I now feel an amazing degree of financial freedom. Working with a financial advisor, I have assembled a varied investment portfolio. I have also set aside some funds to maybe launch my own company some years forward. Opening a community center with reasonably priced mental health treatments and financial literacy seminars is something I'm investigating. But for me, buying therapy for myself and volunteering to do the same for Amy has been the most significant application of the money. Both of us are learning to set reasonable limits with our parents and are working on healing from our childhood events. Though it's a long road, I already feel as though I'm developing in knowledge and ability to overcome emotional neglect and long-term partiality. This whole process has brought some surprising good improvements into my life. I now know a great deal about establishing limits and in defending myself. Though I know I did the right thing, it hasn't been easy and there are still difficult days. I feel good about myself for resisting guilt and pressure. Among the most unexpected results has been a change in my work path. Dealing with all this family conflict and undergoing therapy has helped me to see my own passion about supporting people who, dealing with all this family dysfunction and doing therapy has helped me to see how driven I am about supporting others who have gone through same family dynamics. 
Currently thinking about returning to school to specialize in adult children of emotionally immature parents and work as a family therapist, I have also been helping youngsters from challenging family homes at a nearby youth facility. Being able to offer the kind of encouragement and support I wish I had had as a youngster is immensely satisfying. I'm even considering creating a scholarship fund for children from same circumstances using some of my inheritance. My contact with Amy has kept getting better. Once a month we have a siblings day when we do something entertaining just the two of us. Our hiking and picnic last month was the most laid back and connected we had felt since we were small children. Without our parents' influence we are gently reconstructing our connection on our own terms. Regarding my parents, things remain tricky. Our relationship has been trying to be rebuilt by my mom. She has been routinely attending therapy and has even begun to see some of the damage her favoritism brought about. We have had a few one-on-one -on -one lunches when we have had some honest, though challenging talks regarding our past and direction. Though it's not flawless. Improvement is evident. My dad still objects to change though. He still says he done nothing illegal and that Amy and I should be appreciative. He refuses to be in the same room with me, hence he missed several family functions. Though it hurts, I am trying to let go of my need to compel him to see things differently or control his reactions. For both Amy and me, Grandma now serves as a rock. She has been sharing additional tales about our grandfather and his pride of us for advocating for ourselves. She always supports justice and understanding. Thus she has been a fantastic mediator in family problems. The whole process has imparted a lot of lessons about the actual meaning of family. I've come to see that occasionally the family you select might be more encouraging than the one you were raised in. Along with developing a close-knit circle of friends who have been quite helpful along this journey, I have grown closer to my aunts, uncles, and cousins who stood by me. Setting limits and practicing self-care have also become more crucial to me. I'm growing better at saying no to circumstances that compromise my mental health and I no longer feel bad about giving my personal well-being top priority. I was so preoccupied with trying to achieve my parents' favor that I had always put off investigating new interests and hobbies. To those in same circumstances, I would wish to advise not let someone make you feel bad about getting what is rightly yours. Even if it generates controversy, it's reasonable to defend yourself. Though family dynamics might be complex, you are deserving of fair treatment. Remember, you never have too late to begin developing the life you are due. See a therapist if necessary, surround yourself with encouraging people, and don't hesitate to establish limits. Who you are personally defines your value, not how your family treats you. I want to thank each of you once more for your suggestions and encouragement. It meant more than what you would have known during a really trying period. Although the road has not been simple, I am excited about the future and confident in self-assurance I have not experienced in years. Where this new chapter of my life will lead excites me, and I am resolved to stop the pattern of favoritism and build better relationships in my own future family. Regarding my parents, things remain tricky. Our relationship has been trying to be rebuilt by my mom. She has been routinely attending therapy and has even begun to see some of the damage her favoritism brought about. We have had a few one-on-one -on -one lunches when we have had some honest, though challenging talks regarding our past and forward direction. Though it's not flawless, improvement is evident. My dad still objects to change though. He still says he done nothing illegal and that Amy and I should be appreciative. He refuses to be in the same room with me, hence he missed several family functions. Though it hurts, I am trying to let go of my need to compel him to see things differently or control his reactions. For both Amy and me, Grandma now serves as a rock. She has been sharing additional tales about our grandfather and is proud of us for advocating for Oz. She always supports justice and understanding, thus she has been a fantastic mediator in family problems. The whole process has imparted a lot of lessons about the actual meaning of family. I've come to see that occasionally the family you select might be more encouraging than the one you were raised in. Along with developing a close-knit circle of friends who have been quite helpful along this journey, I have grown closer to my aunts, uncles, and cousins who stood by me. Setting limits and practicing self-care have also become more crucial to me. I'm growing better at saying no to circumstances that compromise my mental health and I no longer feel bad about giving my personal well-being top priority. I was so preoccupied with trying to achieve my parents' favor that I had always put off investigating new interests and hobbies. To those in same circumstances, I would wish to advise not let someone make you feel bad about getting what is rightly yours. Even if it generates controversy, it's reasonable to defend yourself. Though family dynamics might be complex, you are deserving of fair treatment. Remember, you never have too late to begin developing the life you are due. See a therapist if necessary, surround yourself with encouraging people, and don't hesitate to establish limits. Who you are personally defines your value, not how your family treats you. I want to thank each of you once more for your suggestions and encouragement. It meant more than what you would have known during a really trying period. Although the road has not been simple, I am excited about the future and confident in self-assurance I have not experienced in years. Where this new chapter of my life will lead and I am resolved to stop the pattern of favoritism and build better relationships in my own future family. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.